This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio C. Oh, shoot. Mixing things up on a Friday. Look at us. For a very worthy cause. This show, as always, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It's January 21st, wherever and however you're connected. Always wonderful to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who is always happy to remind his opponents of the scoreboard when playing basketball, Jerem Jordan. Yeah, scoreboard, baby. Uh, last night, Alex Barcella to Chase Townsend. Um, they were, they were kind of talking back and forth. And uh, Alex said, hey, look over there pointing at the scoreboard, and Jace looked, and uh, so Alex tweeted, made him look. I think Alex says, hey, hey, what's that? Hey, there's a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. I am here for it. It, it got chippy, oh, and I fierceness. loved it. The fierceness of Alex Barcelo and a few other guys hey. really came out. Hey. Hey, what's that? Made him look. <laughs> got him. <laughs> I'm here for it, A.B. We'd like to acknowledge the crowd that isn't here as well. We do have seats, but no one's in them. So if we play to the crowd, that's what we're doing. Okay. Well, <laughs> we've, we've got four fabulous people in here. Uh, yeah, it's our, it's our crew. They have to laugh. They're paid to laugh. But, yeah. <laughs> well, welcome to Tyler and I's domain, uh, which is fun on uh, Countdown to Tip-Off. It's, it's fun to be in here. This is the place. Yeah. Countdown to Tip-Off. Thanks, allowing Brigham. BYU Sports Nation to hang out on a Friday. Yeah, we allowed it. Alex Barcelo would also like you to recognize today's show lineup featuring BYU basketball legends and NBA alumni Danny Ainge and Greg Kite teaming up like they did in 1981, but this time for a can't-miss all-access interview. The 81 team will be honored at tomorrow night's BYU men's basketball game against Portland, a celebration 40-plus years in the making. We should also celebrate the Cougars of this year picking up another Quadrant One victory. But it had nothing to do with San Diego. You know who is talking about San Diego? Jerem Jordan as we tip off today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Ben Hoops beats the Toreros 79-71 for sole possession of second place in the West Coast Conference thanks to 69% shooting from the field in the second half, led by Alex Barcella with 22 points. Boos had 14 and 11. Seneca Knight and Gideon George combined for 24 off the bench. Cougars host Portland Saturday, tomorrow. BYU Radio pregame, 8 Eastern. BYU TV's pregame, kind of tip off from right here at 8.30 Eastern time. How about that gym arranged three from Alex Barcelo? At nice. A very, very clutch moment. His only make from three. It's a volleyball match night at the Smith Fieldhouse. Home opener for the 10th ranked BYU men as they take on number 13 UC Irvine. 9 p.m. Eastern live on BYU TV. The always entertaining tandem of Jerem Jordan, Steve Vail on the call. The Cougars working for win number one on the season after back-to-back -back losses at number three Penn State. Yeah, and then had a bye, and here we are. So let's go get that first one. 17th ranked women's hoops plays at San Diego tomorrow afternoon, then in Provo on Monday. Updated bracketology, by the way. ESPN's Charlie Cream has the Cougars as a Three seed. How about that? Oh, this is fantastic. Now, I learned last night, Jerem, that hosting games in the NCAA tournament, if you're a top four seed, is not an automatic home run. Mm. There are some other stipulations that go into the NCAA taking over venues and arenas, so we're going to have to examine that a little bit more. Marriott Center is not set up to host a big group in the venue, although if they use the annex, perhaps. So hopefully... And there's like hotel questions. Sure. They're more in Provo now, which is great. You need six full yeah. service hotels and they have you, all these minimums. Yeah. yeah. It's it's an interesting conversation. We'll get into the more of that. Hopefully later. BYU's in the spot where that's a conversation. Yeah. And I think it will be. Three seasons. They're right that now? good. Cougars in the NFL have a busy weekend in the divisional playoffs. Fred Warner and the San Francisco 49ers visit the Green Bay Packers at Lambeau Field on Blech. Saturday night. It's going to be cold. Mm -hmm. Daniel Sorensen, Zane Anderson, and Andy Reid of the Kansas City Chiefs host the Buffalo Bills on Sunday evening. That, to me, my Bengals are playing the Titans. Like, obviously, I'm invested in that one. Right, but that feels but like the, a boring matchup. The Bills-Chiefs game, whew, uh, yeah, that'll that's be going to be intense. That'll be a good one. Number 21, BYU Gymnastics, is in Cedar City to compete with number 18, Southern Utah, who are known as the Flippin' Birds. That's not a joke. We are in Studio C. <laughs> Jokes. 
uh, untapped today, but watch it on ESPN+. Plus. BYU track and field currently competing at the Air Force Invitational, including senior Hallie Folsom Walker, who finished first in the pentathlon. Congratulations. He's better than Dan O'Brien. And Swim and Dive hosts Colorado Mesa in Denver this afternoon. BYU men's tennis play their first non-conference match against Weber State in Ogden on Saturday. The BYU women, after a recent upset of then 11th ranked Baylor at Washington State in Pullman and then at the University of Washington in the Puget Sound, the Seattle area on January 21st. You can see the sound, it's pretty cool. Puget Sound. And the NCAA has voted to ratify a new pared down constitution. The vote was 801 to 195 in favor. NCAA President uh, Mark Emmert said the new constitution is more of a declaration of independence which will allow each of the three NCAA divisions to govern themselves. We don't know exactly what this means, but now each division can figure that out. This is a bigger deal as we move forward over time. Yeah, there's a lot there. Like go, yeah, we, we'll we'll dive in next week when like the convention is done and there's some yeah. more news with it, but it is it is a big deal. Yeah. For now, all rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. BYU basketball taking care of business. And we Every begin. Every day. <laughs> With a resume update, Jerem, BYU in the net rankings, number 27, mm. down one spot. In oh, spite no! Of a win, it's okay. San Diego's metrics, not great. 198. BYU still top 25 in Ken Palm at number 25. Bracketology as of this morning has BYU as an eight seed. Team rankings giving the Cougars an 81.7% chance of making the tournament. I honestly think it should be higher than that. Bracket matrix, which is... Uh, the mystery that we can never really figure out, but compilation 7.71 seed on average. And the Athletic just started their NCAA tournament projections. They have BYU as a seven seed. Yeah. All solid metrics, solid numbers. I would say solid, better than solid. Especially like, when really you consider good. what BYU is dealing with from a personnel standpoint. No, this is great. You're always looking good, man. You're always firmly in. Okay. Uh, now, eight or nine seed is a different question. We, the, those are my least favorites, but trust me, I'd rather be in than not. Also of note, BYU now has two quad one wins because Missouri State has jumped into an area of the net rankings. BYU winning in a true road game against Missouri State. They're a top 75 team now. Now BYU yeah. has two quad one wins, both on the road at Missouri State and at San Francisco. Yeah, Missouri State's 70. There Solid you go. stuff. The fighting whatevers, getting it done. The Bears? Bears. There you go. Great. You've endangered the entire news station. <laughs> Jerem, given the choice, as you look at the metrics, would you take a guaranteed eight seed right now in the NCAA tournament? Or are you more of the opinion that, hey, play out the final 10 and come what may? How do you feel about that? I do love the song Come What May from uh, Moulin Rouge, but that's just me. I would play it out, and here's why. I don't like the eight or the nine. I would love to see if BYU could get the seven or a 10. I'd rather have BYU or as a 10 a, seed. I'd rather have BYU as an 11 than an eight. Because because a six eleven is not a, a big disparity, and then you're playing a three, not a one. After that, if you win, right? So I, I'd be fine. But let's go to the glasses here. Okay. You know, you know what? Let's go to okay. let's go to the resume here. Yes, yeah, low uh, on the nose. Yep, uh, it always has to be low. It can never be normal. <laughs> it's like my it's like like old people when they hold the phone. It's like out here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, okay, two quad one wins, right? Uh, six and three still in quad two. Only four quad one and quad two games. Available in the uh, you know um, the rest of the season six quad three and four that doesn't even count the yet to be rescheduled Portland game which please let's just not reschedule it I don't, we don't need that game it might not happen we don't need the game um, so you have four opportunities to potentially help yourself but you also have six opportunities to potentially have a quad three or quad four loss Mark Pump has yet to have one Wild. in, in uh, two plus seasons now so I would play it out mainly because I don't like an eight seed I just think it's I'd rather BYU be a 10 or 11 than an 8 or 9. So play it out. If BYU beats San Francisco at home and then... When BYU... Okay, That'll when happen. they happen. beat San Francisco at home. They're going to defend uh, the MC here. And if BYU can win at St. Mary's, we're talking about a 7 seed for sure. Uh, you give BYU two more quality wins on the resume and there's no slip-ups in quad 3 and quad 4, I think BYU's earned a 7 seed. So I play it out. So will BYU lose, do we think... Gonzaga at home, if they win, that's great. Let's just say they lose. Okay. Um, and then one more loss. Maybe are Santa we, Clara. Are we thinking at St. Mary's or at St. Or Mary's? At Santa Clara? 
St. Mary's almost lost at Santa Clara last night. Didn't know. Um, yeah, I think two, two losses. So you go in with six losses to Vegas, assuming there's going to be a loss there. So you finish with seven. You have the Here. number two seed in the WCC yeah. tournament. You, uh, you, you hopefully win that semi, get another quad one win over St. Mary's, San Francisco, conceivably. And then uh, you play Gonzaga if you win that. Amazing. Uh, if you don't, it still helps the net. So here's the thing. If BYU is a projected X, you probably add one given Sunday play. That's typically how it works. Okay. So when BYU in 2020 was going to be a, a you know, Lenardi had him a six. There were five right before that. When, when the dust settled and you have to actually pair things and all the different nuances of the bracket and avoiding rematches and conference matchups and da, 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 you drop a seed almost always, not every time. So if you want BYU to be a seven, they need to climb to a six. Okay. Well, last Probably. year, last year BYU maybe surprisingly was projected as a six, and they received a six, and we were like, whoa, we we kind of thought that they would slide to the seven line. They right. didn't. It's so not hundred like, percent yield. Doesn't always happen that way. But like, if you really want that, yeah, you probably need to be one seed higher. If BYU wants to be a six seed, then they have to have two more quad one victories, I think. Which most two more. Which most likely... Well, one in Vegas, then. Yeah, yeah exactly. San Francisco. Would happen either San Francisco at home, depending on where the Dons are, or at St. Mary's, and then you pick up a, a nice San, neutral victory in Las Vegas. San Fran at home is, I don't think, going to be a quad one because they're not going to be top 30 when the dust settles, I don't think. I think they'll be... Most likely not. ...in the 30s or 40s, right? So uh, a top 50 game in Vegas is conceivable. You'll have two more opportunities. It'll be Gonzaga at home and then WCC tournament semifinal and or... Uh, championship game at St. Mary's and at St. Mary's so conceivably um, three quad one yes, games left yes so it's at St. Mary's there's there's the one there's the one you can totally get right and then uh WCC tournament in the semi so there are two yeah there are two there yeah you probably have to win two to feel good about being a six seed and then feeling safe for a seven seed hard to know exactly but yeah yeah uh, right now, hopefully BYU's things pacing, out well yeah they're pacing to be a top 25 team too for whatever that's worth nothing other than exposure, <laughs> right? It's fun to see BYU's name on the ticker and have your highlights play on Sports Center every night and the college basketball shows because you are a ranked team. They don't they don't necessarily show all the top 25 anymore, but yeah. Yeah, when it's on the ticker, it's, it's cool. Okay, so some national recognition. Um, there have already been a couple of teams in, from 21 to 25 that have lost this week. So if BYU beats yeah, that's Portland, cool. BYU yeah. should be a top 25 team. But as we have pointed out yeah. in the resume update, being a top 25 Ken Palm team and top 25 net team is that's, where it's at. That's the most important. Um, and if you can do Ken Palm as well, that's great. Because those are actual metrics that the committee looks at and then will use. Yeah. Right? Those matter more than yeah the opinion polls, which are fun. They're, that's what they are to me. They're Play fun. this thing yeah. out, man. I think BYU is a bad matchup for St. Mary's, just the way that BYU plays, rebounding and tenacity and gets ugly. Like That's what St. Mary's does to teams. Now, BYU is giving St. Mary's a dose of what the Gales have done to teams for such a long time. I wish Mark Pope would wear an oversized suit just to have some fun with that with Randy Bennett. Here's where I could see the counter argument to, no, 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 I want it now. Buey's probably hanging by a thread in terms of health as a team and personnel. Obviously, like, you're one, like, if they, you know, knock on wood if you're superstitious, you need uh, A.B. and Tijon and Foose to all be good. Like, if there was any issue among those three, that's a massive problem. So that, that is one concern I have is, well, yeah, assuming that we assume health. Stay yeah, healthy. We do. But, like, there's no guarantees in athletics that every – like, look at what happened to BYU football. At the, in the middle of the season, you would have been crazy to think that BYU would lose to UAB in the bowl game, but it happened um, because BYU was down to some third stringers in certain spots that – Got an opportunity, unfortunately, uh, you know, we're on skates defensively against the run game. Some instances right so, of fourth and fifth strings. So, so, right? And that's where I say, let's just be careful to not assume that everything's going to be what it is now. Like, things change quickly. Sometimes f for the better, sometimes they get worse. Our question of the day. Given the choice, would you, after the case that Jerem just presented, take an eight seed right now, or would you want to play out the final ten to see what's potentially out there? Maybe it can improve. Let's... Hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation.
on BYU Sports Nation. At Jeremiah underscore Hale on Twitter says, play it out. Other conferences will beat each other up over the next few weeks and could open up a six slash seven spot mm -hmm. if BYU wins out minus Gonzaga. Also, eight, nine seeds have not been kind to BYU in years past. I hate 8-9. I really do. And the opportunity for BYU to be in a 6-7 is there mainly because San Francisco's actually good. Like, we're, if, if they can get to the middle of February in this same situation, I'll be in on them. Right now, I'm still like, okay, you're a quad one road win, which is great. Hopefully, you would be a quad one neutral site as well. Like, if they can stay top 50, that's all we need. Sure. We don't need San Francisco to be in the NCAA tournament, although that helps. We just need them to be top 50 because that's something they haven't really been. That's awesome. Remember when Mark Few called for this? He said, it's, it's just like three of us, you know? And now San Francisco's showing up. Santa Clara's top 100, which is great. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's great. Uh, just in time for BYU to leave the league in two years? Like... <laughs> I'm trying to remember the last time BYU was an eight or a nine seed and won a game. And won? In the tournament. Have they mm. ever done that? Because I don't know if they've done uh, that. They lost to Texas A&M twice. Right. In the gym years. As Xavier, you lose. Yeah. And no. then in 1995, they lost to Tulane in an eight, nine game. We'll bring that up later. I'll look it up. Yeah. Like that's, uh, yeah, that's a tough draw for BYU for sure. Yeah. All right. Okay, coming up, did the shot of the year happen from Alex Barcelo off of the court? And as promised, a couple of BYU basketball legends, NBA alumni Danny Ainge and Greg Kite together with us in yeah. Studio C. Can't miss interview. Stay with us. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. My name is Spencer Finnegan, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Paris that was covered in vines lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. In two straight lines they broke their bread and brushed their teeth and went to bed. The smallest one was Madeline. If they hear us, we dead meat. But we're vegetarians. I'm closing the school down. You can't sell school or cookie faces. You can't. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU in Portland is tomorrow night on BYU TV. Coverage begins with countdown to tip off at 8.30 Eastern time and then the game at 9 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. We are live in Studio C on Friday with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside Jerem Jordan. And as you can see, two BYU basketball legends, Danny Ainge and Greg Kite, are joining us here Great to have both of you with us. Thanks for being here. It's great to be here. Thanks. I'd like to start with uh, a very special picture. Oh, we're going we here first. Studio okay. B. Here we go. I feel like this is uh, the appropriate way to start this interview because it features some dapper gentlemen. Look at this. The boys at BYU, Danny and Greg, you're both <laughs> in this. Sold out like hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to know is how did Greg's hair get by standards? Yeah, like, that was that's that pretty that good. Was, that's pretty good. Next year. <laughs> Probably yeah. it, was a, it was a kind of a perm mullet, which was uh, <laughs> interesting. You know, I talked to Alan Knight, was a good friend who went to BYU who did that. 
And I talked to him the other day. I said, you know, you ever seen those old pictures of old Microsoft guys when they're hippies? Paul Allen Bill Gates just said, we got to recreate that while we're still around. <laughs> it looks good. Our, our only cons- Although, can Danny, can you get up? Well, I could get up. Pull off that still, suit still, yeah. Danny? I don't think that suit still fits. <laughs> that's right. I do have to ask about the red ties. Who chose the red? Oh, no, that's a mistake. That's a big mistake. That's exactly yeah. right, Greg. That's a mistake. Yeah, we, we didn't realize that. So, but it's still sold. Maybe Ute fans bought it, too. So. It's, it's sold out. For that reason. Now, be honest, Greg. Do you have this picture in your house anywhere? I We have it rolled up somewhere, okay. and the kids love it, and they all want to... They all want a copy. So. Danny, I'm That's hoping awesome. this is framed in your new home. I have ne- haven't seen that picture for 40 years. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And I can't remember who gave that to us, but they donated it to the set. So it, it sits on there, which yeah, is super cool. I actually did a handout at one of the games of like 5,000. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So obviously this weekend is, uh, you know, the, the Portland game honoring the 1981 team, which we consider to be the greatest team in BYU history. It's hard to argue with the Elite Eight. Do you guys feel like you were the best team ever at BYU still to this day? Been lots of great teams here, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll vote for number one. And we feel like we we really, uh, you know, sh- should have gone to the Final Four and, and been there. But it, it was a lot of fun. But it's it's just great to be part of the BYU basketball legacy. I follow it. These uh, I'm in the East Coast in Florida, and these 11 p.m. games are killing me. But I still have to watch them anyway. <laughs> It'll get a little bit better in the Big 12 of Central right, Time, we yeah. think. But yeah, I'm not, I mean, 81, 81 was a great team, but I'm not sure 1980 wasn't better when we true, had true. the same group mm. of guys, and we had Durant and Scott Runya on that team, Alan and, and Alan Taylor, right? So that was, I think, 80. We might have actually been better, but the 80, the loss of uh, the 80 NCAA championship game, I think, really motivated us in 81. So you needed 80 to become 81? No, nah, I don't know about that, but we were good in 80, too. That might have been the most stacked team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lost Talent, you're saying? Yeah, that roster? Clemson up at uh, Weber State yeah. in yeah. the first round. After having a lot of, having a big lead, yeah. yeah. But they had some talented guys, Larry Nance and some others that were a great team, too. So. Yeah, well, Fred Roberts has said as much about that 1980 team, loaded with talent. Uh, who's the unsung hero on the 1981 team, who's the guy on the roster that you feel like deserves more credit for what that team did? And we'll start with you, Danny. Um, you know, I think Timo was a really good player off the bench for us. I think, obviously, Greg Balif, you know, I get all the credit for hitting the shot to win the game against Notre Dame, but Greg hit a huge shot top of the key. He was probably our best outside shooter at that time. Uh, Steve Craig also, like one of the great athletes uh, of that time. I think that, um, you know, the thing that stands out to me about that team was our rebounding. I mean, Greg and, and Trumbo and Fred were, you know, maybe the most dynamic yeah. rebounding tandem in, in college basketball at and that time. Gary Furness coming off the bench, he could get some rebounds. And so we were, we didn't drop off a lot when we had a sub in on the front line. I think, I'd say Steve Craig's probably the unsung guy. He was mm. a terrific athlete and you know, probably doesn't get as much due as he deserves. He's going to give you a call and thank you for that. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and people forget, like, the whack was loaded that year. Like, yeah. you guys took third and, and were a sixth seed. It wasn't yeah. like you were this number one seed, you know what I mean? The Utah, Wyoming, and us were all in the top yep. 20. Or San Diego State had uh, San Diego, yeah. Michael Cage and the young Tony Gwynn playing Gwynn, basketball. People Gwynn. forget. Uh, what was it like to battle with those three uh, that season? It was incredible. I remember, uh, particularly, I mean, the games with Utah were always, you know, everybody knows what that's like. But I remember going to that Wyoming, the old rodeo arena they used to play in, and it's uh, <laughs> 10 a.m. and I think it's a noon game, and all their students are out there already lined up and and, and not sober and just swearing at us. And, and, and we had so a usual uh, Dan Lambert. And we had a game. Do you remember that they threw like I think there were like three times they stopped the fast break by throwing a. Uh, uh, an ice full of a, a tumbler, glass out on the floor, and nothing happened. <laughs> they, they, get a, they, they get a warning from the referee. They had thrown worse in the 60s. Oh, yeah, Yes, yeah. they had. But yeah, the yeah. Wyoming fans so were incredible. It yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. They, everybody hated BYU in that era, but um, it was, you know, that, that conference, um, you know, I had Greg and I had a chance to play with Charles Bradley with the Celtics, first round pick out of the right. Celtics. Um, I had a chance to be teammates with uh, Tom Chambers both later in our career. And by the way, shout out to Tom Chambers. He'll get his number oh, yeah. retired in Utah on February 5th. I don't know what took him so long. Guy's yeah. like a <laughs> four or five time all star in the NBA, but terrific, terrific player and a good teammate. And um, But yeah, those were stacked. Danny Vrains and Pace Mannion and 
Charles Bradley and Bill Garnett. Yeah, Is that his Bill name? Garnett. Bill Garnett. Mike Jackson. Mike Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, those uh, guys Chris, were. Chris Engler. They had, four, they had about four or five pros on that team. And yeah. They used to, you know, we, and Charles, trying to guard Charles Bradley. They had, Wyoming used these signs to color plays, and the, when they gave Charles the ball, they just said all night, you know. <laughs> the ball just all night. <laughs> they were like a but, modern football team. Yeah. Throwing but winning up. anywhere on the road. I mean, huh. UTEP was tough. New Mexico was down with some uh, recruiting violations, but they gave us some tough games. Uh, Colorado State, it was not, you know, it wasn't, uh, wasn't an easy league by any means. Yeah, I like to shine the spotlight on the fact that this team, this BOA team in 81, played and beat a lot of great teams. And while we're talking about Utah, I believe it was your senior night, 23,108 fans, which is still a Marriott Center crowd. You're down double digits early. You come back and win that game. And so as great and as amazing as that Notre Dame win was, like I kind of wish that I were able to be at that Utah game because people talk about that like that. that they, it's just packed to the gills. What do you remember about that Utah-BYU game in the Marriott Center? Well, first of all, Utah was a great team. And, uh, you know, like with Brains and Chambers, you know, the top two of the top seven picks in the draft the following yeah. year. Um, Frank Brankowski, uh, Brankowski, is that his name? He was a good player for them. Craig mm -hmm. Hammer, I remember, like gave us fits, Pace Mannion. Danny Brains. They, yeah, they were stacked. And uh, They were number nine, and you were number 18. Yeah, so they were, it was a really good team. It was a really good win for us. Um, you know, they had some unfortunate, good, bad fortune in the uh, NCAA tournament as well that year. Uh, much better team than, than it turned out, but that's the NCAA tournament. It's just sometimes the luck of the draw, and um, sometimes you're just not playing at your best, but Wyoming was stacked. Um, yeah, San Diego State, like you mentioned, UTEP, our conference was loaded. I think in those two years, there was probably, uh, I don't know, but e even in, that, in, the in, the, in the playoffs that year, we played um, Princeton first, and Princeton, like I've spent most of my um, executive career competing against Steve Mills, who was the star player of that team, mm. of Princeton, 1981. And then uh, uh, Michelle Obama's brother, Craig Robinson, was a coach at Oregon State. I tried mm -hmm. to hire him. He was a Princeton team. He was the second leading scorer. We played. Uh, he ran that offense, the Pete Carroll offense. It was yeah. not easy to defend. And then, and then we played UCLA, and they had seven NBA players on that team. And they were the two seed, including Mark Eaton, who you know has has his. He didn't play a lot in that team, but he's had a, had a number retired in, in Salt Lake. Um, you know, right on down the line, our paths have crossed with so many of those guys and, and, and so many legendary teams. But Notre Dame also, they had five first round picks on that team that we beat. And that was when there was only 23 teams. So yeah. five of the top 20, you know, three or 25 players in, in the college ranks. And just about everybody, all those NBA picks and college all-stars, they were staying two, three, four years. I mean, you know, Danny, Ralph Sampson's played four years, the guys at Notre Dame. So they had not only that, it wasn't the one and done era, and they had a lot of experience collectively. So when you go into that, uh, you, you know, you finish the regular season, it looks like with that win over Utah, huge win. You, you get a six seed, you play Princeton, and then UCLA, Notre Dame, Virginia, of course. The UCLA win almost gets forgotten in the shadow of the amazing Notre Dame win, but beating UCLA by 23 is not something to, you know, uh, shirk. Uh, Greg, what was that like to beat UCLA in that fashion to get to uh, a situation where he had the Notre Dame? Uh, that was a lot of fun, and, and I think I scored 10 points, which was amazing in itself. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> to get the ball that many times. I got a few rebounds. He missed a couple. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great, and yeah, they were loaded. I mean, they had this uh, this freshman class that was kind of uh, highly touted with uh, Michael Holton and Darren Day and a couple other guys, Kenny Kenny Fields. I don't remember if Kiki was still there. But no, I mean, Kiki wasn't. He, he wasn't. He left yeah. the year before. And Larry Brown was their coach, been a great coach. And, and but uh, they had Mike Saunders and Darren Day. Yeah, who, Mike. Who, yeah, or, you yeah. know, Darren Day was our teammate at, at at Boston also. Yeah, yeah, and so they were they were an excellent team, and they had that that UCLA history was still there. You know, Coach Arnold did who'd come from, uh, you know, John Wooden's uh, camp at UCLA. So playing them was very special and, and uh, you know, just what a, it was a fabulous win. I, I, and the UCLA game was a special game for me because, you know, I always wanted to go to UCLA as a kid. I grew up in Eugene and the Pac-8 was everything. And um, I remember I got, a, I got a, a letter from UCLA after just after Coach Wooden had left. And it was basically, we're not sure you're quick enough to play for UCLA at that time. Huh. So my first college game of my career in 77 was UCLA in Poly Pavilion, number one rank, Kiki, Vandeway, and 
David Greenwood, and you know, it was a, it was a stack team, number one team, and we almost beat them. We had three freshmen starting, and we lost on a. Alan Taylor actually tipped it in the basket oh. for UCLA um, to win the game by one. And then, then almost my last game of my college career was this UCLA game against Larry Brown four years later. Those were the only two times we played them. But mm. I, you know, UCLA was just a special. Yeah. For us growing up, I mean, it was the John Wooden UCLA. That's what we grew up watching. So, that was a huge game for us. Yeah, I'd, I'd taken one of my recruiting visits there and, and uh, watched these guys lose to San Francisco in the opening round the day before. And it was interesting. Gary Cunningham was a coach. He'd, he'd not been uh, let go right before they hired Larry Brown, and he was very close with Frank Arnold, and they were on the staff. And we were sitting there watching the game with him, and, and, and Gary was just cringing for you know. He's, Sad, but it, uh, one thing about that UCLA game I remember was that uh, we were doubtful that Danny was going to play on Friday. You know, we went on Thursday. I think his back was hurting him, and so what in the a, world? A, a, a little little faith and uh, a little faith and some good works from the the trainers that got him got him ready, and he went out there and had his usual great game. Do you, isn't that right? I yeah. So it was of, actually the Princeton game. I went to the gym without my gear, and we were staying in a hotel next door, and I couldn't move. I was in bed for like. 18 hours or 20 hours I couldn't I didn't even move so we go to the Princeton game on Thursday and um, but I'm at the game and I'm watching Georgetown play the game before ours and the adrenaline's pumping a little bit so I send a ball boy over to get my gear out of my hotel room next door and he comes back and I'm still not sure and I go take you know one more muscle relaxer <laughs> before the, <laughs> and I go and I go give it a shot I have back plaster and you know massage ointment and heat all over my body and I played in that game and then the next day I couldn't walk again so the UCLA Ooh. game was the next day and um, I felt much better than I did in the Princeton game but yeah I had I had one of my better college games against UCLA that day I was gonna say wow. it's a good thing you played because that was unforgettable uh, you've mentioned Coach Arnold a couple of times. Uh, a lot of BYU fans don't know much about him, at least the younger generation. So what do you remember about what it was like to play for Coach Arnold? And we'll start with you, Greg. I, I love him to death, and he was a great teacher, a great person. I think most importantly of all, he really cared about us as young men and about the mission of the church and the university. And and, uh, and uh, we did uh, you know, do a great job. And representing those two things besides being a great basketball team and it was really uh it was really awesome uh, that i mean he had come right from those championships he'd been part of the 88 game winning streak at ucla so uh, you know he, a lot of things that we did with uh i'm sure were replicated after what they did in ucla and i just remember running like wind sprints in high school and you know here in pra we'd go to a practice here at byu and practice two or three hours and and we were running but we never ran a wind sprint it was just a lot, a lot of up and down and Anyway, great, great coach, great teacher, uh, you know, very focused guy, and uh, we loved him. But there's some, some lot of fun stories about Coach Arnold too, as well. Yeah, Frank was Frank was great. He was a great recruiter. Um, yeah. You know, when he comes into your home, you know, he had he recruited Bill Walton and Marcus Johnson at UCLA and some some special players in that in that era. And so, and he also had recruited my older brother. Uh, to UCLA when he was in high school. So I knew Frank, or I had his, you know, he probably didn't remember me, but when he came to my home, I had remembered him when he had come to visit my brother at UCLA. So, but yeah, his his pedigree was impressive. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a great man. Um, I, was hate to see, I hated to see Coach Arnold leave BYU because of, you know, what he, the impact that he had. He continuously told us that, you know, you didn't play if you're getting below a C in a class. We had grade checks, and we had to like be getting academic standards. Um, you didn't play if you, you know, did any, you know, broke any of the rules. Um, it was all about representing BYU. He felt like the basketball program could be the second best missionary um, tool in the, for the church, and that, and he was adamant that we lived our lives the right way, and um, that we had integrity and carried ourselves in the right way to represent the university. All right. And I think one thing to note was about the recruiting, you know, after the Stan Watts era, BYU hit a little lull where the teams were kind of mediocre, and, and he came in, Danny, and then the next class, Devin Durant, and, and uh, uh, Fred, and Robert, Steve Trumbo, myself, and plenty of other guys. So they really, really, he really, really turned it around and hasn't uh, gone backwards since then, you know, all through Liddell uh, Anderson, Roger Reed, and Dave Rose, and now Mark Pope, who's uh, doing a phenomenal job. So it's, yeah, Frank uh, got Frank got you know 
five, four or five McDonald's All-Americans there in like three straight yeah. years, and that was a lot. Like that, that didn't happen at BYU. We're going to need that in the Big 12 here pretty yeah, soon. <laughs> That'd be nice, right? Um, Greg, was, was Danny paying for everything at this point in the 80s since he was with the Blue Jays and had a little extra cash? No. Um, Coach, Coach Harry Anderson was. On the road, we would always go. Guys would order milkshakes and stuff to room service, and they'd charge them Coach Anderson's room. So. <laughs> so I, I was funding Trumbo in the poker games on the road. <laughs> Yeah, and our, and our only income was we would, I think Trumbo led this, we'd always guess who, which bags were going to come out first on the bag carousel at the airport, and everybody put in a buck, so the winner got That's it. funny. I oh, <laughs> love that. You, you I, still had some. But you know what, Honor Code Standards Office didn't yeah, know about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, you weren't with Jim, but, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we should tell him, we should tell him you know, about how much Coach Arnold, you know, cared about us doing the standards. I got a little ticked at Coach Arnold one time, and on a flight, you want to, uh, the Senka story? Oh, I want you to tell it. You know, that's, right. that's a great story. So we're, we're flying to Hawaii, or, or, or I think San Diego go to Hawaii, and so it's a long flight. And for whatever reason, Coach Arnold had been, you know, John at me, and I was a little ticked off or whatever, which I was pretty easy going and not usually that way. So uh, I ordered a cup of Senka from the flight attendant. You know, it's kind of not, not coffee, but a coffee. Decap substitute. coffee. And, and it's sitting there. And it's sitting there, just, and I just let it sit there for a while. I think I inhaled, inhaled, but I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was Greg's rebellious. <laughs> that's good. You know, that's quite the, quite the moment. And, that's and Danny's rebellious was testing the, uh, the, the, um, the theory. Coach Arnold come from, uh, I think, the trainer and things at UCLA where you had a real regimented pregame uh, ritual where you couldn't, you didn't want you to eat a lot of dairy products or milk or extra sour cream and, and before the game, don't strain your eyes by watching TV. So we'd go over to the Cannon Center and you'd have a pregame meal. I think Danny skipped it one day and went and got a cheeseburger and a shake and stuff like that. <laughs> at the malt shop. At the malt shop. Yeah, and then came yeah. in and watched uh, MASH for an hour or something and, and uh, went out and scored 36 <laughs> points. So. <laughs> well, my, my, he, he would have had 45 if he'd held it. Yeah, to it, clearly. <laughs> my rebellious streak was more with the psycho cybernetics. Oh yeah. We had to, we had beds in our in, oh, yeah, in the yeah, Marriott yeah. Center. We had we're supposed to go take naps and listen to these tapes of this positive thing, you know, psycho cybernetics wow. tapes. And I mean, I think I lasted about 15 minutes one day, and then it, and then Frank got mad at me because I was out jumping on the Cosmo trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> Supposed to be taking doing a nap. Dunks, Couldn't probably. resist. Doing dunks up the trampoline. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Oh, my God. You have a great appreciation for the Cosmo dunk yeah. team there. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's funny. Uh, wonderful to have both of you with us. Uh, long overdue to honor this 1981 team. We're looking forward to that tomorrow, tonight, uh, tomorrow night. Thanks for hanging out. This is the studio. Yeah, soon. thanks, Thank guys. you. been great. Thanks. Good awesome. to be here with you guys. Okay, coming up, uh, what is a rebounding hospital? Uh, <laughs> Gideon Something George. Something Gideon George yeah. brought up. Also, uh, Alex Barcelo may have posted one of the shots of the year. It didn't count a game, but still, we're going to show it to you. Tell us what you think. This is BYU Sports Nation. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere, but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to Rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. I don't think I've ever turned on anything from BYU TV and not found myself smiling. 
I think it's just really inspiring just seeing people help one another. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. I really like Studio C because we can all laugh together. It's actually something that makes us reconnect and brings us closer to our family. I love BOI TV. <laughs>
So there you go. And there were there was testing available. I mean, there were like 140 people tested on site for the game. There you go. So you have that. If you're worried about testing and you know I don't have time to get a test, you can go to the Marriott Center and do it. Yeah. So that that's available as well. But yeah, it's just uh, it's an interesting dynamic. It, it definitely affected uh, the crowd. There were fewer people. How about this, Jerem? San Francisco holds Gonzaga to only 78 points last oh night my in a quote-unquote close 16-point loss to the Zags. So does this mean that the Zags are gettable now? Yeah, they're gettable, absolutely. you always beating them when they're number one. Yeah, well, when Jim Timmy starts the game one for nine, that's the key. Uh, yeah, no Gavin Baxter, no Richard Harwood is an issue. Because it's like, well, one of you can kind of match up with Chet Holmgren. I'm sure Timmy's the better player, by the way. I think Chet he missed Holmgren's, one shot against Chet Chet Holmgren's a better pro prospect. Drew Timmy's a better player. Yeah, Timmy, if, if they can miss some shots, then BYU's got a shot. How about that? Don't shoot 70%. You just got paid to say that. Congratulations. That's awesome. Don't shoot 70% and yeah. BYU's got a Don't shot. Don't allow 70%. How about that? Coming up, who is getting today's elite voice of the day? Plus, would you take an eight seed right now for BYU basketball? Or are you going to risk it and play out the rest of the season just to see what happens? Do you improve that seed line? This is BYU Sports Nation. I always say risk it or brisk it. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather and stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, to hit the ground running again and you as well Intermountain Healthcare official medical provider for BYU Athletics There are things happening in Seaburg They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick If they're causing toxic pollution it is everyone's fight We can't just let them get away with it If anyone can figure this out it's my brother Friends don't abandon each other Fine be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Listen to BYU Hoops tomorrow's Cougar Shows Portland, the whole city. Coverage begins with Cougar pregame live at 8 Eastern. Craig Bell, Mark Lance on the call at 9 Eastern on BYU Radio and the app. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio C. If you missed our interview with Danny Ainge and Greg Kite. Matt Meese, where you at? Download the podcast right now. It was awesome. Just a walk, down, mem walk down memory lane, including uh, it was a run. memories it was from playing at Wyoming yeah. and having glass bottles thrown on the floor at you in the middle of the game to stop a fast break. Again, in the 60s, they threw worse things. <laughs> Just so we're all on the same page here. Time to recap our double down picks from last night's San Diego at BYU game. We each give two predictions. Each one we get correct, which didn't happen, is worth a point. If we get both correct, you're in a bonus point for a total of three points. Jerem, lead us off. Number one, no one will score 20 or more in the game. Alex Barcelo at 22. So bum, no. bum, ba, Number two, no player will have a double double. Foose had 14 and 11. I have no points. Bye. Hey, we're chilling because uh, I said BYU will hold San Diego to 60 or fewer points. And uh, San Diego passed that mark with about four minutes left in the game. They scored 71, so no point for me there. They also hit more than five three pointers, which yeah, I said would heck? not happen. The Toreros made a bunch late in the game. 
They go eight for 20 from the three-point line. So Jeremy and I go 0 for four combined. Yeah, baby. In our picks. BYU won. All good. You're 29. I'm still at 15. And uh, Jason I and Dave, it just really doesn't matter. Okay, so what are your picks for the Portland game as we try and turn things around? BYU is going to score 80 plus. Um, Portland hasn't allowed 71 plus in over a month. Ooh. So you guys are going to go 80. Okay. 80 plus. Offensive show up. And then Barcelo and Foose combined for 18 or more first half points. They combined for 25 and a half in games. Okay, so they're going to have a big first big half. Big first half. Yeah. Okay, I like these. Yeah, these are feeling very proppy. Number one. Portland will Proper. not have more than nine points five minutes into the game. <laughs> Very specific. Yes. They, nine they, points. They will, they will be in single digits as a team five minutes into the game. Now I'm trying to do the math on like. It's set, they average 72 points a game. Yeah. So it's 36 and a half. Yeah. So five minutes will be nine it's points. 18, 10, 10, nine. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nine points. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah. Okay. 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 Slow cool. start. Slow start for Portland. So, yes, they'll be under their average per Correct. five minutes. Correct. Okay. T. John Lucas will have a three to one assist to turnover ratio or better. Right now, he averages mm. about two to one. He's going to have a big night distributing the ball and taking care of the ball. Three to one for T. John Lucas. He has to have a minimum of three assists to even qualify for Correct. your stat. Correct. Yeah. He averages like four ish. 4.7. Yeah. And he averages yeah. two and a half turnovers a game. So not quite two to one. Okay. I think he'll go for six assists, two turnovers or fewer. I do miss dead ball rebounds in this conversation, <laughs> but we'll get to that later. Coming up, rise and shout outs to the return of a good thing. Plus, who deserves our rise and shout out? Is it somebody from BYU basketball after a hard fought win? Or maybe it goes to somebody who's opening the season at home tonight. This is BYU Sports Nation. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. So, do you tend to exaggerate or stretch the truth? Um... What type of construction have you done? Every type. Like, name some. Um, you ever been on a roof? Yeah. You ever stripped a roof? Uh, I keep my clothes on. Well, there's a little bit more to it than that. Oh, I know everything. I know a lot of stuff about about makeup and, and nails. Have I, you done nail art? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I speak, I speak what I feel is true. Uh, what are you writing? This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Of course, you can download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast or uh, you know, subscribe, rate, and review as well. Our question of the day. Given the choice, would you take a guaranteed eight seed and a spot clearly in the NCAA tournament, or would you play out the final 10 regular season games and see if BYU can improve? And I know. Or, or uh, worsen and better the seed, if you will, if you don't like an 8 9. Yeah, That's, you don't want to play an 8 9? You I, want a 10 would, or an I 11? would be okay with the 10 or 11. That's why it's worth the risk to me. So many of you have tweeted and said, this is a no brainer. Like, you play out the games, this team's got potential. But to your point, Jerry. How much better can it be, though? To your point, what if. Heaven forbid an injury There's happens. There's an injury, yeah. Or there are a couple of bad losses, and then BOA becomes a bubble team. 
Honestly, I don't know that BYU can play much better than it's playing. What is BYU, 16 and 4? BYU's 16 and 4 with those injuries? Like, I think BYU's overachieving. I think BYU's doing an amazing job with this group to figure it out without those guys. I think it's awesome. Yeah, and it's going to take, I think, at least two more quad one wins to improve on that seed line. Yeah. It, yeah, you can't walk into Selection Sunday 2 and 1 in quad one, although all the quad twos really help. If you group those together and you think of those together, um, great. But if when BYU is being compared with another team that has more quad one games, more quad one wins, that's where it's going to be a, a tough battle. So, yes, BYU has got to have like three quad one wins going into Selection Sunday to feel confident it can get a six or seven. Sure. This is a guaranteed spot right now. Like, you're in the tournament. It's good. You got your whole roster, everyone's healthy, it's good. It starts now. Like, would you take that? Or? Yeah, the, the whole roster as is. Yeah. You risk it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Risk it or brisket, man. Luke Xander on brisket. Instagram says, if you say take the eight seed now, you are just showing zero trust in the team. No, I disagree. You are showing that you, you understand what's going on with this group. Again, I don't know how much better it can be. Like, I... This is a, 16 and four. This is a let's make a deal moment where it's like, yes, hey, yes. You, you've already got a bunch of money in the bank. Like, do you want to roll it and risk losing a bunch of it or maybe all of it? Yeah. Or maybe you could walk away with more money. Right. No, I, absolutely. Yeah. Deal or no deal. Right? I'm not, Are you going to open up the suitcase and see what happens? Yes. BYU is 16 and four. And I, I think it's awesome um, the way this team has figured it out to win at this clip. Like, if BYU had Gavin Baxter and Richard Harward, could it be much better than this? You know what I mean? Like, they have Foose's development, and, uh, you know, it's fun to see Gideon George play better since he became an island boy in uh, Hawaii, you know? And, and Trevenel's playing well, and Spencer Johnson has a certain role, and Tiki Ali Atiki, when he's not shoving people in the face, he's playing really good. <laughs> like, it's great, <laughs> which it, sometimes, someone, sometimes you need to be shoved in the face. You lose so your cool, and that guy had it coming. <laughs> All night. He was chirping all Wayne night. Wayne McKinney the third. Yes. He was chirping all night. Hey, it, let's compete. It's all good. In, okay, our elite voice of the day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Okay. <laughs> Looks like uh, at Roberts underscore MN has been watching too many Matt Damon commercials, Jerem. You mean commercial? Or the commercial. Isn't there one? His latest commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he tweets, Arentes fortuna yuvat. Fortune favors the brave okay so play it out so invest in crypto is that the message, <laughs> is that, is that the message? invest in cryptocurrency <laughs> okay okay today's rise and shout out presented by mountain america the official credit union of byu athletics who do you got jerem seneca knight and gideon george for really showing up uh 24 points off the bench last night i, th I thought that was pretty awesome seneca 14 points 12 in the first half yeah you and gideon, carried that byu offense in the first and half. then gideon all 10 were in the second half that was great. He scored on three straight possessions. Uh, Alex Barcelo, I thought, was just a monster last night. He was. They made him mad. You did this, San Diego. You did that. And the return of men's volleyball at home tonight. Steve Bale, what's up, baby? Let's oh. go. Our thanks to today's guests, Danny Ainge and Greg Kite. Starting to Dennis Pitta. We just had people that, uh, you know, won, uh, you know, in the Baltimore NCAA tournament. NBA championships? Yeah. You had only one Super Bowl. For Jeremiah, such a shout-out to Greg Ballot. We'll see you tonight for BYU Men's Volleyball, 9 Eastern. Go Cougs. Volleyball!